thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Washoe County Library System Art Town Mondays with the Nevada Historical Society. Today's topic is Washoe County and our speaker will be Joyce Cox. Our host from for today from the Nevada Historical Society is Linda Burke. My name is Aurora Partridge. Um, we've been having a great time with our Art Town Mondays with the Historical Society. It's each Monday of the month, two programs a day, one at 10.30 and one at one. Um, please feel free to register for those events on our events page at events.washoecountylibrary.us. And now I would like to introduce the host from Nevada Historical Society, Linda Burke. Thank you, Aurora, and thank you to the Washoe County Library System for allowing us to do our history talks this summer from here via Zoom. My, as I, my name is Linda and I am a docent volunteer at the Nevada Historical Society, usually doing school tours and I've also been on the docent council. Today, I, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Joyce Cox. Joyce is a native of Baker City, Oregon, but has lived in Washoe County, Nevada on and off since 1974. She has worked as a research librarian in Washington, California and Nevada. She does contract research on Nevada and Washoe County history, genealogy, politics and ranching, mines and mining. Joyce is a docent volunteering in the research library, photography and in the front office. Joyce is a member of the Nevada Women's History Project, writing and researching on the lives of the First Ladies of Nevada. Joyce has served as a treasurer, finance chair and membership chair in the Nevada Library Association. And she's also the author of the book on the topic of which she's going to talk about today. So she is an expert. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present Joyce Cox and Washoe County. Thank you so much, Linda, for the introduction. Um, I wrote the book Washoe County in uh, 2011. And what it does is it tells the history of the county through historic photographs. In 2016, I wrote another book on Sparks, again telling the story of uh, Sparks through historic photographs. So I thought today what we will do is kind of take a trip around Washoe County through the uh, photographs that are in the, either the Sparks book or the Washoe County book and um, see what is uh, available in Washoe County. We will see some of the old ranches. We will see some of the ghost towns or what were settlements uh, in early Washoe County. We'll see even some of the early settlers and what they did. Um, there were churches and schools at, that in early, at the early times. Um, many of the photographs come from the Nevada Historical Society, but there will be also some from the Sparks Heritage Museum, Nevada Department of Transportation, and even some private collections. This cover of, the, of my book shows a family at the Deep Hole Ranch. The Deep Hole Ranch was a large cattle and sheep ranch in, that was part of the Gerlach Cattle Company that was in Northern Washoe County. This family is enjoying a, su a sunny afternoon in 1898. Washoe County was one of the first nine counties in the Nevada Territory in 1861. The county is in the northwest portion of Nevada. It borders Oregon on the north, California on the west, Carson City or what was known as Ormsby County on the south, Lake Tahoe is in the southwest corner, Gerlach, Wadsworth, and the Pyramid Lake Indian Reservation are on the northeast corner of the county. Humboldt, Pershing, and Story counties bordered Washoe on the east. Washoe County covers over 6,300 square miles and has an estimated population as of 2019 of 471,519 people. That makes it the second largest county in Nevada in terms of population and the seventh largest in terms of geographic area. Just so you'll know, and as you can see from these maps, Nye County is the large, largest county geographically. Clark County, which is the largest county in terms of population, is the sixth largest in ter geographically and has 2,266,000 715 people. As you can tell from these maps, the county is long and narrow. It will 
will take you over five hours to drive the length of the county north to south, which is about 196 miles, and about an hour to drive the county east to west, which is about 44 miles. Reno and Sparks are the only two incorporated cities in the county. Reno is at an elevation of 4,500 feet. Sparks, which is the second largest city of the county, is at an elevation of 4,413 feet. Washoe County gets about 11 inches of rain per year, while Reno and Sparks get from seven to nine inches. Reno has been the county seat of Washoe County since 1871. The first people living in the area came here between 12,000 and 15,000 years ago. The Paiute, Washoe, and Shoshone tribes all lived here. Hunters and trappers came through the area in the 1820s. John C. Fremont came through High Rock Canyon in northern Washoe County in 1843. He camped on the shore of Pyramid Lake on September or January 13, 1844. He described Pyramid Lake in his report of 1843-44 as a sheet of green water set like a gem in the mountains. At, the tame, at this time, he named Pyramid Lake after say, seeing the pyramid saying, this striking feature suggested a name for the lake and I called it Pyramid. This, the previous drawing was from his, was from Fre Fremont's report. This uh, picture from the 1950s is similar to what we see today and probably slightly different from what Fremont saw. There was probably about 60 feet more of water when Fremont was there in 1844. The Pyramid Lake, Pyramid Lake is on the Pyramid Lake Indian Reservation that covers over 475,000 acres in Washoe, Lyon, and Story counties. Land for the reservation was set aside in 1859 and President Grant formalized it in 1874. H. H. Jameson is thought to have been the, have set up the first trading post in Washoe County. It is thought that it was three miles southeast of the present day Sparks. He set up the, the trading post in 1852. Jameson, who was living at, in Washoe Valley at the time, drove a herd of cattle to a spot where Steamboat Creek enters the Truckee River. There he sold much needed supplies to the immigrants who were traveling through the area on the Truckee River route and from the four, in the 40 mile desert. Jameson often bought immigrants cattle to fatten up and resell to later travelers. Jameson is thought to have left the area in 1853, but it has been found that he may have stayed as late as 1854, living in a tent north of what would become Stone and Gates Crossing. George F. Stone and Charles C. Gates began taking immigrants across the Truckee River on their rope, to, rope ferry in 1857. By 1860, Stone and Gates had a toll bridge. This bridge was destroyed during the flood of the spring in 1860, and the county would rebuild the bridge as a free bridge in 1861. When the post office was established at Stone and Gates Crossing, the area was renamed Glendale. At this time, Glendale was big enough to have a hotel, restaurant, saloons, a blacksmith shop, and a meat market. The Stone and Gates School, or later known as the Glendale School, was one of the earliest school buildings in Nevada and in Washoe County, and was built in the spring of 1864. Just so you'll know what it was like coming into the Truckee Meadows in the 1850s, 1850s, we have excerpts from a journal by Harriet S. Ward, who came through in September of 1853. While she was crossing the Steamboat Creek, she, she said, we came to the crossing of a miserable deep slough, the bank of which was nearly perpendicular. Frightful enough to us it was, I will assure you, but with our wagon box raised and our wheels locked, down we plunged. Many people came through the Truckee Meadows just as she did during this time. Agriculture was an important industry in the county, 
until about the 1940s. Alfalfa, hay, potatoes, onions, and cabbages were grown. Cattle, sheep, horses, and chickens were also raised. By 1880, there were supposed to have been at least 200,000 apple trees in Washoe Valley. The Surveyor General Report of 1883 reported that Washoe County Farms had apple, peach, pear, plum, cherry, and nectarine orchards. By 1893, newspaper articles were telling how productive the ranches in the Truckee Meadows were and even comparing them to farms and ranches in Mississippi by saying its yield of hay, grain, and vegetables per acre is more than double that of the Mississippi Valley and the states farther east. The Truckee Meadows were referred as, to as a fertile valley in 1897 newspapers that reported, if the hungry world knew what Nevada can produce, she would be sending representatives here. In 1925, Washoe County had more farms of any county in Nevada and ranked third in the production of wool. George Alt settled at the Stone and Gates Crossing, which is now near East the East McCarran Boulevard Bridge as early as 1862. He bought 160 acres through school land warrant number three for $5 per acre in 1865. In August, George Alt and Louis Dean, one of his neighbors, were using a steam thrashing machine that had a 16 horsepower motor. He rented out the machine to several of his neighbors so they all could, could thrash their crops. In 18, August of 1881, he said the th thrasher was working steadily and that he expected to continue working until it snows. George Alt also tried very, uh, many different uh, types of plants to grow in the Truckee Meadows and in 1885 planted 400 stalks of tobacco to see if tobacco could be a good commercial crop for the area. Other people had tried tobacco and in 1891 and 1892 the Agricultural Experimental Station uh, at the University of Nevada was trying to determine what types of tobacco what could be successfully grown in Nevada. Apparently, it was not a successful crop. The Alt Ranch would later become parts of the Mapes Ranch, then the Kimlick Ranch when it was bought by R.J. Flick, and in 1948, 15 acres of the ranch, plus the Flick Ranch House, which was at the same place as the George Alt Ranch House, became the first Minogue High School. Grenville Huff, Huffaker arrived in the area in 1858 or 1859 with 500 head of cattle that he had brought from Salt Lake City. Huffaker homesteaded his ranch that was south of Reno and established a trading post, stage stop, and post office by 1862. The, the stage stop was called Huffaker's and was thought to be the largest stock and freight center in the Truckee Meadows at the time. The ranch house, as seen here, still exists on, in, on South Virginia Street in Reno. Other crops that were grown include this gladiola uh, field that was uh, on a farm near Holcomb Lane and Virginia Street in the 1940s and 1950s. A Nevada State Journal article in April 1955 described the gladiola fields as bright colors, dramatic against the hills. I have seen one uh, color photograph of the gladiola fields and the, they're all red with a very blue sky and it is really a very pretty picture. Uh, medicinal herbs, herb and lavender were also grown commercially at the San Antonio Ranch in Washoe Valley during the 1940s and 1950s. Cattle and sheep were grown, were raised north in northern Washoe County. And here is the Big Canyon Ranch that was on the west side of Pyramid Lake. It was owned in 1925 by Mrs. Hannah Flanagan. Mrs. Flanagan sold the ranch to Hiram D. West, who renamed it the Big S Ranch. The ranch became a dude ranch from 1934 to 1938, when it was owned by Beverly and Francisca Blackmore. 
Harry Reichman, a song songwriter, entertainer, and sportsman from New York, bought the ranch in 1949. The county also had many dude ranches. The Monte Cristo Dude Ranch uh, was in northern Washoe County, uh, overlooking beautiful Pyramid Lake. Dude ranches came to the county in about 1927 to offer accommodations to those who were seeking quick Nevada divorces. The Monte Cristo was owned by brothers Ike and Bud Blondell, and it was a working dude ranch, mean, meaning that if you were one of their guests, you were doing part of the ranch chores. I'm not really sure how that worked, but um, it might have been fairly exciting. Um, in 1930, the Nevada State Journal described the ranch as a real western cow ranch located 35 miles from Reno overlooking beautiful Pyramid Lake. Sheep were also raised in the area. In 1867, Daniel C. Wheeler brought sheep from Oregon to his Virginia Road Ranch. Other sheepmen in the county included the Ward brothers in the Granite Creek Ranch in northern Washoe County and George Mapes, whose ranch was in Glendale. Horses were also a big, um, were also raised in Washoe County. Um, an article in the Reno Evening Gazette in 1908 stated that horses raised in Nevada at an elevation above 5,000 feet had broad chests, big lungs, and great powers of endurance. The brief article went on to report that Nevada was fast making her mark as a producer of fast and swift horses. Washoe County was really a mining county also early on. We really don't think of it as that, but there were several mines that were in the county. Um, you often hear the phrase rush to Washoe, which was used by miners and prospectors as they were rushing back through the Utah Territory after the gold, California Gold Rush. In 1859, gold and silver were discovered on the east side of Mount Davidson near, near, in nearby Story County. So the thought was, if there was gold and silver uh, as close as Mount Davidson, then there had to be gold and silver in Washoe County. Um, miners and, and prospectors returned to the county in search of gold, silver, lead, tungsten, and copper. Prospectors tried their luck in Jumbo, Olinghouse, Whittigan, and Poville. The Donnelly Mountain Mine, which was located in northern Washoe County in the Granite Creek Mining District on Division Peak in the Calico Mountains, was discovered in 1902 by James Razor and James D. Murphy of the Gerlach Cattle Company. By 1911, their five stamp mill produced $90,000 in gold bullion. Poville, which is located north of Reno on the east side of Peavine Mountain, was an active mining site from the 1860s through the 1920s. The Paymaster Mine was discovered by John Poe, who was said to have been a relative of Edgar Allan Poe in 1874. A.D. Griffin worked the mine for 25 years in the late 1880s. Poeville was also known by the names of Podunk, Poe City, and Peavine. Poeville had a post office in 1874 and a school by 1876. Olinghouse was located six miles west of Wadsworth. It was named for Elias Olinghouse and was first prospected by Bill Williams in the 1860s. Gold was discovered in the late 1890s here. In 1903, Olinghouse had cabins, bunkhouses, two windmills, and storage rooms. A railroad line built by the Nevada Consolidated Mining Company connected the mine to stamp mills in Wadsworth. By 1907, the boom was over and everyone had moved out of Olinghouse. The Buster Mine was one of the mines located in the Olinghouse Canyon. Uh, it was owned by Buck Ingalls. Here mine, miners are working in 1906. Getting closer to home, the Whittakin Mine was located two miles north of Sparks, which would today be near McCarran and Pyramid Way. Uh, the story is that George Whittigan, who was a piano tuner, 
uh, was eating lunch when he was casually kicking a rock. He looked down to see what the rock that he just kicked and noticed that there were gold flecks in it. There was another story also that he was walking along kicking rocks, but nonetheless, wherever he was kicking rocks, he found a rock with gold in it. Um, he had the rock assayed and that showed it was rich in silver. He was able to get at least $10,000 worth of ore out of the mine, and when he sold it in 1902 to John Sparks for $155,000. John Sparks, of course, would become the Nevada state governor in 1903, and is the governor who the city of Sparks is named after. Gold and silver were mined at the Whittakin mine, and as you can see in the picture on the right, it was an underground mine. In 1924, the Pacific Portland Cement Company opened a gypsum mine, gypsum plant in Empire, which was five miles from Gerlach. At that time, the plant was claimed to be the largest plaster mill west of the Rocky Mountains. Reno, Sparks, Wadsworth, Mogul, and Verdi were founded and expanded as railroad towns for either the Central Pacific, Southern Pacific, Western Pacific, and Virginia and Truckee Railroads. In 1868, the Central Pacific Railroad, part of the first transcontinental railroad, was built through Washoe County. Wadsworth became the division point for the Central Pacific in 1868. Trains would stop in Wadsworth to get fuel and water and then continue on their way to Salt Lake City. Wadsworth became a freight center for the mining camps in Esmeralda, Nye, and Churchill counties. And by 1900, Wadsworth was the second largest town in Washoe County. In 1901, the Southern Pacific uh, Railroad bought parts of the Central Pacific Railroad. Shown here in this photograph are workers in 1902 in Wadsworth. Edward Harriman, who is the president of the Southern Pacific, planned to reroute the tracks through Nevada to help to eliminate the dangerous curves and steep grades and to build newer and bigger railroad shops. Harriman had looked at property in Reno and in the nearby county and he settled on two ranches, the Mary Wall and William Thomas ranches that were four miles east of Reno for the new division point. So on April 30th, 1902, William Hurd, who was the chief engineer of the Southern Pacific, held a meeting with the Wadsworth employees and most likely with many of the men that were in this photograph, and told them that the Southern Pacific was going to open this new division point and everything would be moved to East Reno is what it was called then. Hood stated that the Southern Pacific would move all their employees with all their possessions, lock, stock, and barrel to the new town. Houses were then loaded up on flat cars and box cars and Travel to East Reno. The Sparks Rail Yard, when it was purchased, was really a swamp land. Um, the land had needed to be filled in and leveled before construction could begin. It took six months, 24 hours per day, seven days a week to bring dirt, rocks, and sand to fill in and level the land for the rail yard and the railroad reserve. The foundation was laid in late 1903 and work began in Sparks, September 19th, 1904. Just to show you how big the rail yard was in Sparks, these are th this is a picture of the roundhouse crew in 1914. They are standing on a turntable and the turntable was enlarged by 20 feet in 1911 and again in 1928, making it the largest turntable in Nevada. The roundhouse in Sparks was said to be the largest roundhouse west of Chicago with its 40 stalls. Newspapers described the Sparks rail yards as miles of side tracks and hundreds of switches. There were storerooms, a powerhouse, engine rooms, a foundry, and a car building plant. The rail yard at its largest was 2,200 acres on the south side of B Street or what is now Victorian Avenue. Verdi, which was also a railroad town, but it was also a lumber town. 
the Central Pacific came through Verdi and opened a station in 1868. Verdi got its first post office in 1869. The Verdi Lumber Company, which was in Truckee at the time, uh, was a railroad tie producer and soon moved to Verdi for its operation. Washoe County lumbermen found a market in their lumber, timber, and cordwood products in Virginia City and Gold Hill after the discovery of the Comstock Lode in 1859. Galena, which was east of the Steamboat Hills, and Incline Village all produced lumber for the mines. Here we see teams of 20 to 30 oxen uh, used to transport logs from the Sierra Nevada to, through, to the sawmills throughout the county. Verdi in 1902 was considered a lumberman's paradise. There were at least 45 men employed in mills and 50 men employed working in the woods. Because Verdi was a lumber town, it experienced several fires. In 1902, the Verdi Lumber Company box factory was destroyed. In 1903, when a city block, a city block burned, in 1916, at least 46 houses were destroyed and in 1926, the largest fire, the lumber mill, roundhouse, storage yard, and school were burned. As I said before, Incline Village was also, also provided timber for the mines in Virginia City and Gold Hill. Here, timber was hauled up the 18-foot tramway, dumped into a V flume to descend to the mills in Washoe Valley. Wagons then took the logs to Virginia City, Incline Village, was named for the steep incline. This photograph is near what is today Sand Harbor. The small towns of Washoe County, Franktown, Ophir, Jumbo, Galena, Olinghouse, Via, Flanagan, Leadville, and Poville declined to near extinction over the years. Reno and Sparks are the population hubs in the county while Gerlach, Empire, Wadsworth, and Nixon have populations of under 1,000. Incline Village and Verdi are larger. Here we see the Washoe, Kent, uh, the Washoe City Courthouse. The Washoe Valley towns, towns of Washoe City, Franktown, and Ophir were established to provide service to the Comstock mines. Washoe City, as the largest town in the valley at the time, was named the county seat and remained the county seat from 1861 to 1871. The Atchison, New York, Buckeye, and Minnesota quartz mills were nearby. The courthouse was built by John A. Steele for $15,000 in 1863. It was sold in 1873 for $750. Reno, as I said before, was the, became the county seat in 1871. The towns in Washoe Valley began to decline when the Virginia and Truckee Railroad was completed from Virginia City to Carson City and used to bring the ore to mills along the Carson River. Franktown, another town in Washoe Valley, was laid out by Mormon elder Orson Hyde in 1856. Residents here were mostly farmers and sawmill workers. Jumbo was an early mining town on the west side of Mount Davidson. Gold was first discovered here in 1859, but mining was only active from 1861 to 1863. Gold, silver, and tungsten were mined here. As I mentioned before, the Glendale School is one of the earliest schools in Washoe County. Um, it was built by Archie Bryant in 1864. In 1866, there were at least 30 students attending. That just tells you how big the area of Glendale was. The school closed in 1858 and is now located at 905 Victorian Avenue in Sparks. The Sparks Heritage Museum provides tours of the school. The Franktown School uh, was built in 1857. It was one of the earliest schools in the Nevada Territory. This photo, dated from the 1950s, was often thought to be the most photographed school in Nevada at the time. You can see because you see the snowy hills behind it or the snowy mountains behind it. In 1856, the last year the building was a school, 11 students attended. The school then became a community center and when it was being re-roofed, 
in 1963 uh, burned to the ground. The Huffaker School was built in the 1870s. It had a bell tower and a one room for students from first grade through eighth grade. Students here are shown in 1898. The old Huffaker School is now at Bartley Ranch Regional Park. The first school in Sparks was the Sparks Grammar and High School. They had students all the way from kindergarten through, uh, through 12th grade. It was built in 1905. Robert Mit Mitchell, who was the principal of the school and later superintendent of the Sparks School District, is on the right. The grammar school, the new grammar school, was named after Mitchell in 1925. And um, there were churches in uh, old Washoe County, um, and many uh, churches had what were called saddlebag missionaries who traveled um, by horses or mules from Reno or Sparks churches to preach the, garb the gospel throughout the county. The Methodist Church in Nevada was known for its saddlebag missionaries. This photograph is of the Emmanuel First Baptist Church in Sparks, which actually was the first Baptist Church in Wadsworth. In 1904, the church voted to uh, leave Wadsworth and come to Sparks, where all of their parishioners had moved. Lumber from the church in Wadsworth was used to build the Sparks Church and Governor John Sparks uh, donated gla stained glass windows. Since I haven't said anything about Reno, I thought I would end my talk today with a slogan contest. In 1924, uh, Reno was getting ready for the Transcontinental Highway Exposition that was supposed to have been in 1926. They wanted a Reno related slogan to use for advertising. This slogan was going to be used on windshield stickers, bumper stickers, letterheads, and envelopes. They gave $15 to the best for the best slogan and $10 for the second best. The winner uh, was James N. Floyd, who suggested you'll like Reno. Um, James N. Floyd was a reporter for the Nevada State Journal, a member of the Chamber of Commerce, and a member of the Advertise Reno Committee who actually chose this, the slogan. He, he, it was said that this slogan is short, positive, aroused curiosity, and is true as the experience of those who visit Reno proves. The second place slogan was Reno Land of Charm. But Floyd even wrote a poem about uh, the slogan with the last parts of the poem going, Reno has both pep and business, year-round climate you can't beat. It has drives just full of wonder, lakes where fishing is a treat. If you're seeking a location where no joys in life you'd lack, you'll find our city's slogan, you'll like Reno, is a fact. Um, and actually, you can say this follows Washoe County also, that you'll like Reno or you'll like Washoe County, where the real West still lives. Well, thank you for joining me on this trip around Washoe County. And I think that's the end of my program. I'm a little bit short today, but that's it. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Joyce. And we'll have questions shortly. But before we go on to questions, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Nevada Historical Society. On your screen, you'll see a picture about, of Jeannie Weir. The Nevada Historical is, Society is Nevada's oldest cultural institution, founded in 1904 by Dr. Jeannie Elizabeth Weir, a history professor at the University of Nevada. She saw that the past of Nevada was rapidly disappearing due to the boom and bust cycle of Nevada's economics. And so she set about personally collecting all she could to preserve its artifacts and print materials. And by this, I mean she wrote letters to old timers to record their memories. She traveled by horse and wagon and by train in her summers to collect and store them in her own home until 1913. She got company directors and politicians to donate their papers and their possessions. And that is how we got the 20 mule team model currently on display in the Nevada gallery. The WM Stewart Law Office sign also displayed. And we have the oldest known photograph taken in Nevada, a July 4th parade in Virginia City dated 1862. 
We also have newspapers, maps, and manuscripts. The Nevada Historical Society is located at 1650 North Sierra Street on the University of Nevada, Reno campus. It consists of a museum and research library. Nevada Historical Society is currently collecting people's COVID-19 stories and experiences. Just like Jeannie Weir collected stories in her day, we want you to collect to, to send your stories to our to our um, society. You may submit these via the website, email them to our director, Catherine McGee, or mail them. Um, please do so. I'm sure you have many interesting stories to tell of these difficult times. Now we shall go to some questions. And I have a couple here. First of all, Joyce, someone wants to ask you, where was the gladioli field again? And perhaps you it can tell more about this photograph with its red, red gladioli with the Asian it, eyes. <laughs> it was on Holcomb Lane in South Virginia. Holcomb Lane in South Virginia? Holcomb Lane in South Virginia Street. And, and where is the picture located now? Do you know? Uh, that picture comes from the Nevada Department of Transportation, but the Historical Society does have many, well, a few pictures of the gladiola fields. Okay. Um, the 1952, there's a 1952 Nevada magazine that has the color photograph in it. Very nice. I'm sure we'd all like to see that. Um, also, Lorraine wants to know the picture of the Huffaker Ranch home. Was that an ink drawing or a photograph? I believe it's a photograph, but uh, I'm not really sure. I believe it's a photograph. Okay. And also the, 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 the miner on the mule, was that um, a dated photograph, an actual photograph of the miner? Could you explain that? As uh, I think that was probably a promotional uh, photograph or maybe even a postcard. And I, I think, but I could very well be wrong, that I think it was probably done between 1950 and 1960. In 1960, we had the uh, uh, Winter Olympics in Squaw Valley. And when people came into the Reno airport, flew into the Reno airport, they were often gre greeted by a miner uh, leading his, his donkey um, or burrow around. So I think it was probably done at that time, but um, again, that's just a guess. Uh, is the Huffaker Ranch House still there? Uh, the Huffaker Ranch House is still there. It is um, on, Virgi well, it's on Virginia Street. It was always on Virginia Street, but back then, you know, the Virginia Street wasn't there, but the Huffaker Ranch House is still around. Okay. I believe it's a gun shop now. Oh yes, actually, it, it is still there. It is, it is. I have seen it. Yes, down on South Virginia. Right. Well, thank you, Joyce, and thank you for everyone for listening today. Don't forget, copies of the Washer County book written by um, Joyce are available from the the library on loan. Thank you, Aurora, and thank you, John, behind the scenes and the Washer County Library System. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Please come next week for the last uh, event in this series. See you then.